Hi, welcome to CEO Corner and I am Giselle Michelle. Um, and I'm happy to be back to talk to you once again today. The theme today will be a continuation of, or I should say a third installment on a theme that we had begun to talk about um, three videos ago. So we started first with the great resignation and what employers, leaders uh, can do to mitigate that exodus. One of the recommendations I made was the need to understand um, sort of the, the, the stress level, the concerns of employees, and, and the, one of the responses needing to be more flexibility around how they work. Part of that flexibility was the need for people to work remotely, right? And acceptance of that desire that people would have to work remotely. So the last episode then was focusing on how managers, supervisors, leaders could successfully manage a remote, a remote workforce. Today, we'll talk about the concerns that are some of the un underlying reasons why employers, um, leaders, business owners would have for being reticent around really sort of embracing the notion of a hybrid or a remote workforce. The idea came for me um, to do this, this um, talk, if you will, when I ran into um, a sh fairly short article by uh, Professor James Haskett um, at Harvard Business School. And he asked this question, can companies with remote management succeed? And I thought I was really fascinated by that because, um, you know, this is, it's a new area, right? Like the workplace was not designed for us to, to work remotely, for us to be at home doing it while, you know, leaving offices empty, right? Or at half capacity, 25% capacity, you name it. This is a newer um, reality that we are embracing as a society, as a world, as a global community. It, however, it doesn't mean that it's not possible to do that. I think we'll, it's, what is required is that we are we are going to have to be more intentional in how we manage and how we look at the workplace. We are, as a result of what we all sort of endured last year, i.e. the pandemic, entering into a kind of a once in a lifetime, if you will, reconfiguration, opportunity to reconfigure our world. And the work world is a significant part of what that world looks like. So I think it's really reasonable for employers to ask, can we succeed? Can we thrive if our environment that was not designed to be remote is now going to be primarily remote, partly remote, etc. It's a very reasonable question. And it turns out that there's not a whole lot of research yet, right, on the answer, a, de a definitive answer to that question. Right. Everything is in, in, is, is in process, in progress, right? And so 
So that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at some of the, uh, a couple of articles that I've, that I've taken out um, to highlight the conversation today. I'm going to put them in the description box so that if you want to uh, yourself go back and do your own research, read, read them more thoroughly, you can do that. So the first article that asked the question that prompted this video, again, as I said, by James Haskett is, can companies with remote management succeed? So in asking that question, he, he asked Greg uh, Carmichael, CEO and chairman of Fifth Bank Corp in Cincinnati. Um, and, and Mr. Carmichael is going to be in one camp and, and you'll see for him, he says, we cannot be a great company working remotely. We can get the job done, but we cannot flourish, to paraphrase. Siding with that thought process um, is Matt Ishbia. He's the CEO of UWM Holdings, and, um, and he says, we are better together if we have an amazing culture and great people that collaborate and work together, then we want them in the office together. Again, there's no bad or good there's just experience and how people and leaders feel, um, you know, that they should move forward in the best way for their particular environment and their particular companies. And it's gonna, and we're gonna come back to that. Uh, this idea of, you know, no one, you know, model fit, fitting everything, right? Um, so as a result of this, this camp, we need to be in the office together in order for our culture to flourish. So the underlying concern here being organizational culture, right? We're going to somehow hamper our, hamper our cu culture if we continue with this hybrid or with this, you know, remote, um, model that we have had to practice um, as a result of, of the stay-at-home mandates that have been going on throughout last year. So a couple of other companies you, you, I know you've heard about, Goldman Sachs definitely is one of those companies that falls in that camp, um, JP Morgan, um, both of them had said that they had planned to bring employees back. Uh, frankly, early summer, May, July, uh, with the intention or with, with the knowledge at that time, it was early in the year that, that they were there, the post was taken um, for them, you know, to ask their impressions. But early in this, this, this year, they were saying, they were thinking like a lot of us, that the momentum was going towards vaccination. And so by the end of the summer, by midsummer, most people will have been vaccinated. Most people will feel comfortable um, uh, or it will be safe health-wise to have people back in the office if we do all the mitigating um, activities required to do uh, that, that we need to do. Um, Eli Lilly is another one of those companies, Wells Fargo, right? Although Wells Fargo being a bank, I mean, they had to have some people on the ground throughout the, 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 the pandemic, but for those people who could work remotely, the majority of the workforce, they, they were working remotely and they wanted to bring those people back as soon as possible. Well, you know, and, and to their credit, they were saying they were optimistic that conditions surrounding COVID-19 vaccinations and case levels would allow them to keep that promise of bringing people back sometime early this summer. You know, 
And again, no bad guys here, but the reality is that we have had a lot of hiccups with respect to vaccination, with respect to, um, you know, variants. Uh, the Delta variant has been very, very aggressive worldwide and certainly in the United States and hospitals are at their maximum. Um, and even people who are, who are ill with with non-COVID related activities may who may be um, have had to have been hospitalized have had difficulty finding spaces, right? And most of the reason being that people who are not vaccinated are taking up hospital beds. Again, this is not a judgment, it is simply a statement of facts. So as a result, employers who had visions of wanting to go back um, early in the summer, May, July, have had to keep pushing back their deadline. The, 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 more re the most recent deadline had been early September. We are now in early September and we know that the numbers are not great and employers are saying November. And some people are even saying early next year, early 2022, January, or even spring January, uh, spring 2022, right? So um, on the other on the other side of the argument are uh, people like Matt Mullen, Mullenweg, who is the founder of Automatic, and he. He and Automatic. I, I had not heard, frankly, of of Automatic, but Automatic is the parent company of WordPress, which you know, which fuels most, at least a third of computers uh, systems around the country. So I certainly have heard uh, not computer systems, but you know, you know, um, web websites and all that kind of stuff. So I certainly had heard of them. Um, and they have employees in 72 countries and counting, right? And for them, you know, uh, they certainly embrace the, the, the idea of remote, uh, remote work. They have had it as part of their business model almost since their inception. And, but for, it is for them though, an intentional thing. Right. So because they've had it for a long time and they almost have had it built into their model, it is for them something that is intentional. Communication is really kind of the 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 one of the the stressors for them, uh, ensuring that employees have the technology that is needed so that they can complete and 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 do their work. Um, in remote settings um, and, sh and bringing um, events uh, together, uh, events, pulling events um, and organizing them in such a way that employees could be brought together very intentionally. So that, um, so that is really an important part for them as, as part uh, you know, what they see as the success of having a remote environment that is culturally strong, right? Because at the bottom, one of the key elements for a lot of employers is how does now working remotely affect the foundation of kind of that, 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 the connective tissue that keeps us together, right? And the connective tissue is the organizational culture. So uh, one of the, uh, a couple of the companies looking uh, that had gone into the pandemic, um, not necessarily working remotely, but certainly having to consider, okay, now, given what's what's facing us and what we are hearing from our employees, how are we going to move forward? Companies like Facebook, Twitter, um, Square, Spotify, 
were some of the first to say that, you know, for us, if, comp if employees want to continue to work remotely permanently, we are for that. I think Facebook said, we'll do it for 10 years, right? Um, and by 10 years, in, rea in all reality, the world, the, 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 the sentiments of the world will, will likely have changed again. I mean, we're just now in a post-pandemic era, or I won't say we are not in a post-pandemic era. We are now navigating um, a world that, that tries to look at what is next post-pandemic although we are not there yet, right? So as we're trying to navigate that narrative, uh, try to define that narrative, we are saying, yes, this, high, this, this remote work model, whether it's hybrid or permanent, is going to have to be a part of our signature if we want to keep good people. So looking at the issue of, of organizational culture, what do we do? So Gallup, um, Gallup's Nate Dvorak, um, spelled D-V-O-R-A-K, um, you know, wrote a piece about four managers, leaders, to consider as they are looking at um, the hybrid or a remote model uh, for their work for their workplaces, and I think he one of the things that he emphasizes, and others as well who do this kind of work, who have done this kind of work um, over the past the course of these past few months, and certainly that I have done with. Uh, with some clients is, again, culture is very specific to a particular entity. So the response then that you create also have to be specific to your environment, to your industry, to the demographics that you want to hit to your clients. And so the model then that you adopt has to be specific to your organization. So reach out to your managers, have to be, reach out to their, to their re direct reports to get, to, to get their, their perspective on what makes sense for them, right? Is it a full-time remote? Is it a couple of days? Is it, um, and what does a couple of days mean? Is it just coming in for meetings? Um, is, is it, um, you know, those kinds of things, right? So, so being able to, to get people's ideas about what the world of work looks like for them in a remote or hybrid setting so that you as a manager um, can begin to codify new norms for the organization. There are a couple of issues uh, to, to consider, right? So, no, so one size therefore does not fit all is a key element. When we, again, we look at organizational culture, um, the issue of diversity and inclusion um, is often sort of kind of overlooked as people are redesigning these, these strategies um, because Again, you have to consider that people are now once again um, at home, interacting in the bubbles in which they're comfortable, 
um, or with which they're comfortable. Uh, and conversation often had through uh, technology, right? Not always the most um, conscientious, right? Uh, in terms of acknowledging uh, different needs of people and so on and so forth. And so as managers and leaders, you know, <clears throat> it's going to be important that one, communication is stressed uh, in all kinds of ways, right? Communications around meetings, communications about how you design meetings, um, communication, ensuring that people uh, are, are not intentionally left out or, or, or accidentally left out um, of the flow of, of things um, that um, issues around, uh, you know, um, so how you comport yourself through communication and technology with people who may not necessarily, um, like the, the, the subtle codes that might be evident when you're one-on-one -on -one with people are not so evident when you're online, right? Quote, unquote, right? When you're in a digital uh, format. And so there's going to be a lot more demand on the part of managers, supervisors, leaders to ensure that, that a culture of respect, a culture of inclusion, and I'm speaking broadly now, um, is, is really adhered to because those are going to be the underpinning of your values, right? Those are going to be the way you live out your values. If you say it's okay for people to work remotely, if you say it's okay for people to work in a hybrid fashion, then you've got to make it okay all the way around. The how of it, right, has to be also okay. People have to feel like they are still a part of the overall environment. So in the past, um, I think one of the concerns historically uh, had been for people who work remotely, because clearly the idea of remote work is not a new one. I mean, we all know that. Um, but in the past, there had been some very clear disadvantages to remote work that were emphasized. And one of the, some of them were that people often... Um, were affected in terms of pay, right, and promotion, and also the kind of assignments that they would get, right? Because a lot of the, the, these things, as I think I touched on the, the last video, you know, conversations that happen organically in the coffee room or in or break room or in, in as you're going out for, you know, you... Um, in, you know, walking down the hallway or in a meeting or pre-meeting, post-meeting, the small talk that you have, um, again, that happened in person, is all of that is not necessarily going to be there in the same fashion. And so it's going to be important to make sure that you're, that, you know, as, as a leader, as a manager, direct, et cetera, the decision maker, that you're aware of that, right? That you're aware of that and that people are, are, are um, not made to pay a price, you know, of, of growth and development for the decision to work at home. Because again, those are the things that will affect your organizational culture. Right. 
And those are the things that will affect whether or not people actually end up staying with you or not, right? They find your workplace to be a viable workplace, a workplace where they can themselves thrive, not just your business, not just, you know, your product can, 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 can continue to be uh, productive, but that they themselves um, as the talent can also thrive. So the thing about, um, I'm going to try not to keep the, there are a couple of different ways that I can, that I can sort of delve in at this point. Um, there are a couple of ways that I can go, you know, um, but I, I don't want to make the, the video too, too long. So what I will say, um, what I will say is this, that um, as a leader, um, it's important to ensure that the virtual experience is as close to the personal one-on-one -on -one experience as you can make it. It's not going to be the same, but to be intentional about ways to make it as close to that as possible. Because frankly, that will, that will be the thing that will either make or break your organizational culture. One of the questions that somebody had asked is how do we make sure that the remote workers feel included in their teams? So that is, go that is going to have to be um, one of the questions that keeps running through your mind as a leader, right? How do I make sure that everyone in my team feels included, feels like they are part of the organization? And then finally, as you design your strategy for either a hybrid or a remote um, environment, be sure that you elicit the voices, the ideas, the concerns, the considerations of everyone you know, and you can you you can do it through surveys. You can do it through conversations. You can do do it through, um, you know, sort of managers asking team members, and and then taking that and then building on it with another department, and so on and so forth. There are many ways to do that, but but the key here is to know that there is no one size fits all just as there's no culture that is the same in one company as it is in the other. You're going to have to devise strategies that are very particular to your culture and to the people who work with that particular company. Your culture, your values um, are going to be the drivers, your existing culture and those va the values on which it is based are going to be what then are the underlying pieces of the, the strategies, the design, the model that you use to build your new hybrid or remote or a combination thereof um, or in-person, um, you know, work uh, environment. It's, it's an, an amazingly exciting time for supervisors, managers, leaders um, to help really add to what is becoming a new important narrative in the workforce. I would love to hear what's going on in your workforce. Please um, help us to grow by liking, commenting, um, subscribing, on 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 um, this video so that um, and and click the notification bell so that when a new video it drops you'll know about it. 
Um, and again, I would love to hear what's going on with your work environment. And until then, I look forward till the next time we see each other or you see me and I imagine that I see you. All right. Thank you so much. And I will see you next time. This is Giselle Michelle. Bye-bye.